Hey, I'm Megan Scully, and this is the Limerick Post Show. Coming up in today's show, the big interview is with Limerick band Foxjaw. First up, though, the top stories in Limerick, and the Limerick Men's Sheds have been chosen for the Sheds for Life initiative, meaning all members will get healthcare and wellbeing advice. Two Limerick firms have been chosen as finalists in the Irish Innovation Awards. Electricity Exchange and Farm Hedge will go forward to the finals in Dublin later this year. Now, the one thing I have to ask you, away from all the politics and away from it all, um, what are you thinking of the Rugby World Cup so far? Um... Kind of interesting, kind of sociologically quite interesting. Like I, I like I've mates obviously when Scotland match, how fast Irish people can go from. We are like, oh my god, I hate us. It's like okay, right lads. Sport is a really complex thing. Many different things have to go right. And um, everyone's freaking out now and hates Ireland. And went from to be just, just. I think we all just have to take a step back for a second and trust them. And trust them. They're they're a far better team than Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Japan just played far better on the day. <laughs> uh, when it comes down to it, um, we need to maybe try to stop getting distracted with, with what happened. It wasn't good, uh, but in saying that, I've never witnessed or enjoyed a uh, sporting performance quite like Japan on, on the day. And I really don't, don't want to give Ireland too much, too much focus on that day. Japan were yeah. everything that's amazing about sport that day, um, everything. But are they a better team than Ireland? Of course they're not. Uh, but that's how sport works. It does, not at the end of the day, the lads are only human themselves. We have a full interview coming with the Blizzards later on this month. First up, though, I chat to Fiona of i.ny all about the festival. And joining me now in studio, it's Fiona Booth of i.ny, and you're going to tell us all about this event. Now, what exactly is i.ny for those that maybe have heard of it or seen posters but don't actually know what it is? Yeah, so i.ny, it actually stands for Ireland, New York. So it's a cultural festival Mm -hmm. that happens every October, um, which basically shares... Um, because obviously there are millions of people Mm -hmm. who claim Irish heritage in New York. (laughs) Um, So we kind of wanted to look into the history and the modernity of that relationship. We celebrate that relationship through uh, various events, through fashion, Mm -hmm. sport, politics, talks. Everything. Uh, Yeah, exactly, yeah. But it's so amazing, I find, when I've been, I've been to New York now twice and you walk down every single street and it's just Irish names everywhere from all the diaspora and just all the, all those that went back years ago through different famines, through recessions. And I think the, the relationship between Ireland and New York is just so strong that when I was in New York and you go into a, anywhere and open your mouth, it's like, oh my God, you're Irish. Yeah. And suddenly this, this conversation sparks up. So there's, there's almost this like friendliness as well. So I think what you've set up here is something very special and kind of something that it's kind of wonder hasn't been set up sooner. Do that kind of way? It's know, like, it's yeah. like, how did someone not, because it's like our the relationship is so strong. Yeah. Well, the project has been in development for a few years now. Mm. And so this is the third year of the festival that's coming up now. Um, but yeah, like that, I mean, the Irish, they say the Irish built New York and yeah. the underground, the skyscrapers. I mean, there's, you know, Irish people have really kind of uh, marked the city. In yeah, the way, so. they really have. Yeah. Next up, Keen was out and about and he chatted to Ella from Bula Bus all about the festival. Yeah, absolutely. Like Bula Bus is, as Limerick's only dedicated the- children's theatre festival, is really programming the best of work. So Baba Yaga are coming here from Australia. They're coming first to the Dublin Theatre Festival. They'll be at the Ark this weekend coming. And then they come to us and then they leave us and go on to Barbaro. So I think people are more familiar with Barbaro as a children's theatre festival. But we're programming almost the same amount of work and certainly the same quality of work. Um, Stick By Me is also at Dublin Theatre Festival before it comes to us. So, you know, rather than having to travel to Galway or Dublin, you can see that level of international work happening here in Limerick City, like right on your own doorstep. And why do you think it's good to have a kids' theatre festival here in Newry? You can't be what you can't see. <laughs> you know, young people need to know that uh, theatre is for them. You know, these are not incredibly hoity-toity institutions that only adults are allowed to go to and only some adults. You know, the theatre is for everybody and it's really important that we uh, start theatre education really young so that young people understand that this way of expressing themselves is not just good for your confidence but it's good for society you know this is how we we teach our young people how we want the world to be and so it's really important that they are exposed to a variety of work and to a variety of stories in that work and so taking work from other countries as well as like really great homegrown work Paul Curley's The Dig it's a really beautiful show and um, we've got a, a great colouring competition for that actually you can win uh, a prize to bring your entire class so <laughs> so if one child wins the colouring competition they get to bring their whole class to come and see that show um, which is really sweet uh, but Paul's a lovely Irish maker of, of, of work for, for young people you know children's theatre is 
not necessarily childish. You know, there's some very adult themes that we will investigate through the course of Bula Bus. Things like um, from Graffiti Theatre Company from Cork, they're bringing a show called This Girl Laughs, This Girl Cries and This Girl Does Nothing. It's three little girls, triplets, who are left in the woods by their woodcutter father. And one of them goes left, one of them goes right, and one of them stays exactly where she is. And they meet 20 years later, having forged their own paths and sort of find their own way through the world and had their own experiences. They start out as identical, but obviously we each have a different personality. And so by being separated, they're able to explore those different personalities. You know, these are the, the big themes I'm talking about in terms of the, the work that we're programming. We're here, of course, in Dolan's, and I'm joined by Morgan and Shane of Foxjaw. Lads, how are you getting on? Good, yeah, all good. Yourself? Sure I'm not too bad. It's Friday. True, yeah, actually, yeah. Friday the <laughs> 13th. Sun's shining. Mm. Yeah, oh, I forgot days. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say <laughs> anything now. You don't look tired, but you did have a late one last night. Tell me what was going on. Uh, yeah, no, it was all right. Yeah, it wasn't too late. But yeah, no, we were playing in Dublin last night. We were in the Workman's Club in Dublin. And uh, yeah, it went well. Yeah, yeah. happy with it? Yeah, pretty good turnout. Yeah, you know, for a Thursday night in Dublin, it's always nice to get up and play it in front of a nice crowd, so, yeah. And with that venue, that was actually, we hadn't played there in 10 years in that venue. Wow. Yeah, 2009, 2009 yeah. or 2010, I think, was the last time we played in the Workman's. Show your age there now, lads. So, <laughs> go on, tell me, what's been going on for the summer? I know there's a new track out. There is, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we've put out a couple of songs this year. We've a new single at, at the moment called Let It Run. Uh, we'll put out the video for that in the next couple of weeks, and then we've shows then for the rest of the autumn. September, October, November, yeah. Yeah, so the plan is we've got a new album coming out next year. So we're just building up to that at the moment. I think we've got our little kind of roadmap, I guess, in place of single, 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 album and all the little bits in between. So it's going to be a busy, busy few months, but yeah, looking forward to it. Now, you actually have uh, more jobs outside of being in the band. So um, tell me, like, how do you juggle that? Like, is there times that Fox Dog gets like, really busy and you have to kind of step back? Now, I know obviously you make loads of videos. We first met on the set of The Two Johnnies. Um, so like, how do you juggle it all? <laughs> you just have to. Uh, it's kind of, um, yeah, like, I mean, being, being musicians, there's very, very few, few musicians that can even be full-time musicians, mm. really, these days. Uh, everybody does have extra jobs. Um, I guess one thing that we've managed is we actually have a shared calendar. So everybody immediately, as soon as they know if they're unavailable for certain dates, they start putting that into the calendar and we start populating that so we can see when people are free, when people are not. And that has been one of the biggest advantages in the last couple of years. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know, because we've been in a band for quite a long time, so like, we've gone through different formats of what way we communicate with one another and what way we do things and operate things. Um, and things like shared calendars, Google Drives, and WhatsApps are actually just all the recent apps that we take a lot of advantage of and keep in constant communication yeah. and sorting things out, yeah. Yeah, but it's so common. I mean, we were talking about this there yesterday, about uh, Mango, you know, Mango Mathman. And he's doing an interview there recently, and he talked about he, he works you know, as well. So it is so common, everyone works, and it's like that illusion around the side of, you know, you're full-time in a band, and you are full-time in a band, but it's like you just manage that roadmap around your schedule. So, I mean, we make it work. Plus, working from home helps as well. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, we're, we've been, we're all fairly lucky that um, we either are self-employed or work from home or have uh, jobs and bosses and careers and that are flexible, that understand we're in bands and that kind of give, you know, you know, they can give us leeway and things like that. Um, with current employers or past employers, everybody's been pretty good to us, so, yeah. And as well, of course, playing in Dolan's, that gig is coming up. It, like Dolan's, a lot of musicians that I meet playing here, this is one of like an iconic venue. It's like award winning. It's kind of every musician's dream to play here. So what is it like getting on stage in Dolan's? It's just a second home, really. Yeah, because <laughs> we've been playing here for so long, for so many years. Um, it was always, I remember even being in school, probably in fifth or sixth year. And when you started telling people that you're like, um, I don't know, I was like, oh yeah, no, we have a gig in Dolan's and they're like, Jesus, you're moving up, lads, <laughs> moving up in the world. Um, that's what I was like in Newport, they thought Dolan's was moving up in the world. <laughs> but, uh, it, but, it but it is, no, it's just like, and it's, it was it for us at the time and now it's obviously, there's just, there's, I mean, there are a few places to play in Limerick and the Dolan's is always, has always been a constant there coming up now to its 25th anniversary next year as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also just, it's, there's, in Ireland, you can go and play loads of small places and things like that, but if you are only going to play four or five places, Dolan's is always on the list. It's always Cork, Limerick, Galway, Dolan, Belfast, and Limerick, it's always going to be Dolan's, and that's just the way it's been, yeah. yeah. And I think it's a family thing as well. Mick and Val have always sort of looked after local bands, giving them a chance. There was no, like, oh, you could have, I don't know, some big bands from globally playing here on a Saturday night, and then, you know, there's... Uh, 
you know, Limerick band playing the next night. So there was never any sort of like, you know, well, you're too small to play here. So that's always been really... That and also just a non-discrimination in terms of genre. Because you mm. do get that maybe with other venues where they may be like, oh, no, geez, no, no, that's not that kind of... This isn't that kind of place. But like here, not even that it's from night to night, but all within the same night, you'll have people walk through that front bar, through the trad session, come upstairs, you know, go into, into a club night, you know, with DJs, then there's metal bands in the next venue, then there's country music in the next venue. And it's just... It's 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 crazy and it's amazing and it's really really good. Yeah, I have to say that with Dolan is great. Every time I love looking at the listings just to see. And as you said, there is so much going on, so much variety, and they support everyone, which is wonderful. Now, as I said, we are in Limerick, and aside from Dolan's, got to do some Limerick questions with you guys. Right, okay, okay. So, favorite place to go for a pint? Can't say Dolan's now, can we? That's too much Dolan's. Yeah, Dolan. <laughs> we're, go- we're gonna we're gonna go outside Dolan's because you're playing here, so we're gonna move around town. Hmm. I don't get to go for a pint too much, but uh, <laughs> Charlie Malone's is a good spot. Yeah. Yourself? I'd say the Cargower if the weather is mm. nice. Yes. Um, and if you can get a seat. <laughs> if you can get a seat, yeah. Yeah, true. Favourite chipper? Oh. D- depends on uh, state of mind and time of <laughs> night, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> It's Where, nicer, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, well, the quality the control kind of well, yeah, gets true. a little. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose Donkey Fords or Enzos or yeah. Yeah, we'll say Enzos. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. There's so many good chippers. And finally, favorite thing about Limerick? It could be people, places, or just some some random Limerick thing. Hmm. You go first, Morgan. Um. I'm gonna say I'm from the country, so you know it's like. Um, I'm like 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes out the road, and it's such a like it's so nice to be able to kind of travel out. You're in the country and then come back into the city. And all my friends are here, and I live, I suppose, in Raheen, which is like considered the suburbs, but like <laughs> it's not really like you know. So I guess that's a nice vibe. It's a city, but it's like you know a big town, um, and I like that kind of vibe about it. So yeah, I'd say I, I agree as well. It's just like it's it's like what everybody calls it's, it's kind of in between. It's not a town. It's a bit bigger than that, but it's not a city. It's a bit smaller than that. Uh, as someone described to me before, is like you could be in the main street, but you could still see a tractor drive up the main street. Like, um, really? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you see that. Uh, oh yeah, and then same is like I mean, I also kind of live around the Dura Dola area, and geez, within five minutes, I'm on a country road with cattle around me, like that people don't even know. Mm. So it's kind of yeah, it's that that nice that nice thing about it. Uh, and I guess I don't know. Everybody talks about. Everybody always says the people about yeah. Limerick, but it's kind of true. It's uh, yeah, I don't know. People, the people who are here are people who want to be here. I have to say, I think Limerick is one of the most friendliest places around. You can just go out on your own and be well looked after. So, Foxtrot, do remind you to play in Casbah October 5th. That's it, mm-hmm. yeah. And I want to say thanks so much for trying to the Limerick Post show, and I can't wait to see what's next. Deadly. Cheers. Thank thanks you very much. much. Thanks for having us. For these stories and so much more, head over to limerickpost.ie forward slash show. I'm Megan Scully. This is the Limerick Post show, keeping Limerick posted.